her idea. She didn't want us to leave before that. She loved it. She loved Grandma. Yeah. Mrs. Barber was, she she just loved Grandma like it was her own daughter. She was just a sweet lady. Good Christian people. What did she and, look uh, like? And, uh, hmm? What did she look like? She, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't heavy by any means. She had, uh, 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 about a normal weight of uh, someone her age. And I'd say she was probably, a, I can't remember now, maybe maybe in her 70s. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't remember now. It's, it's kind of vague. But she was old compared to you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she just loved Grandma. She loved Grandma. So you have you have Stephanie. Where do you guys go after that? Back to your apartment? Um, after that, we... Uh, I think we went back to the apartment. And then we had friends from, from uh, the neighborhood we came from back in uh, Wareton, Steubenville. And... Uh, they told us about this track that was being built and uh, and there were very nice homes, hardwood floors, plastered walls, blah, 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 blah. And uh, you have to go take a look at them. They're, they're very nice. So as soon as uh, Grandma and I, as soon as we saw them, oh, absolutely, absolutely, we're going to buy one. Because I had... We had money. She has some money in the bank. So we had uh, collateral where we didn't have to worry about anything. So putting a down payment, I don't know how much it was. It could not have been too much. But it was affordable. Let's put it that way. And uh, and we moved in there and uh, we didn't have any curtains. We didn't have any rug. Uh, we only had... Uh, uh, the kitchen with a an old antique gas stove. <laughs> Someone loaned it to us. <laughs> wow! So we uh, we did very well, and we never argued. We never complained. She didn't complain. I never complained. Did you see that card that I showed you? Don't worry, honey. It's going to be okay. Yeah. She, she loved me, and I loved her dearly. Yeah. And uh, I, I just I just don't want to get involved. You know, this Portuguese lady that uh, I met at the dance, boy, she did everything she possibly could right. to get me to uh, say yes. Right. I remember. I remember. So, so you have Stephanie... And you're living in California. Yes. And you're we're living. We're living in uh, the house on uh, uh, in California. That house that we had mm -hmm. that uh, we had for all those years. Was yeah. that Ellen Ave? What, what was the name of that? Was that Ellen Ave or? It was. Uh, Hmm, hold on, let me the, see. The, uh, I can't remember the name of it real quick. Highland Court. Highland Court. Yes. That's what it was, Highland Court. And uh, our, our friends that were from Wareton told us about them, and they said, oh, you have to go look at them, Betty. They're, they're beautiful. Paved streets, curbing. So you had, that was new. Huh? You bought the house new. Yeah. You were the first people living there. I was it. the first, first family in there. Wow. And um, the, there was uh, a fellow from uh, uh, Wareton that uh, we didn't know him. We met him and his wife 
uh, at a later date, and she was from Minnesota, and a nice, nice lady, and he was a, a very nice fellow, and he worked at Kaiser Steel, and uh, I was working at a, uh, a place, I think it was called Mendrum. I think it was called Mendrum. They were making uh, uh, rollaways, you know, rollaways with four wheels. They uh -huh. were making rollaways there. And uh, my, my friend Sam D. Giovanni, who was from Wharton, he was a, uh, a police officer in Wharton, uh, right close to where uh, I lived in Fallen Spay. So I knew the name. I knew the name, and he knew the name because he knew my uncle, who was uh, so well known, and he was a bus driver. My uncle, he had the the most outgoing personality that he didn't have. Not even one mean friend. Everybody loved Tommy Belanco. He had such a such a positive attitude, personality, and. Uh, uh, when when I would uh, mention my name, are you related to Tommy Belanco? Oh yeah, he's my uncle. Oh, <laughs> so uh, th things worked out very well. Right, right. There was so... no 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 stress, no pressure. Right. Uh, so so you're you move into the house at Highland Court. Highland Court. You move into the house at Highland Court. And uh, you have Stephanie at the time. Yeah, we had Stephanie. Okay. And what what is life like there? Your how far is your drive to work? Where are you working? I was working at Aerojet. Aerojet. No, wait a minute. When you first moved in no. there, where were you working? Working there. <clears throat> oh, I worked at uh, several jobs. I worked at a place called Marquard. It was an aerospace company, worked at Kaiser Steel, and uh, Kaiser Steel was uh, the best job I had, where I made the most money per, per week. So why did, so what, okay. And, and, and I was working, um, but I have to back up a little bit there where I was going to the trade school, and I was, uh, I was still single at the time. And this is where? And I was going to a trade school. Where was where, a teacher. Where was this? This was before I was married. So where were you living? I was living with my mom and dad. I was okay, not so married. Oh, not in California. You're in West no. Virginia? No, in West Virginia. Okay. And yeah, you're we're going li to the trade school. My mom and dad, not married. Okay. Yeah. And um, So tell me what you were thinking about that. You wanted to go back to this time. Well, so. uh, I was working... I was working at, um, no, I was going to school. Going to school, school right. Machine shop school. And uh, this teacher was one of the uh, supervisors in the machine shop. And uh, he says, uh, how old are you, Steve? Uh, I says, uh, well, I'm 17. Why? He says, and he says, how do you stand with the draft? I says, I'm 1A. I'll right. be gone. I says, why? He says, I can get you a job tomorrow. <laughs> right. I remember. I remember. You, you, you told me that one. I get you a job one. tomorrow. You told me I that said, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, and so I says, no, I'm 1A. And, <laughs> and it did happen. I was drafted. Yeah, I remember. And I went to boot yeah. camp in Great Lakes. And uh, yeah, you, you, you told I did well with Great Lakes. I was a platoon leader. Yeah. Wow. Left, right, you left. Left, right, you left. You left a good home on your left. Right. <laughs> See, certain things you don't forget. Right. But it was um, it was not a hassle at any time uh, during the periods before, uh, before going to war. And then even after I was over in the South Pacific, I, I could still remember pretty much everything about the New Hebrides where I landed 
the first time. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I I want to I want to go back. We'll talk about that one, yes. all that later yeah. on a different one. Okay. I want to I want to So we're we're in California. You've you've been married and you moved We had Stephanie. You had Stephanie and you moved into Highland Court. And then from what, there What did you Our friends told us about the 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 new track opening up in Highland Court. They were from Wharton. Right, right. And so you move into Highland Court. You move in and you're living there now. Yes, we bought the house. What What do you do with the house? Do you... The uh, house of West Virginia? No, no, no. The house at Highland Court. Did you put an addition on it or... or... Uh, not, not for uh, a while. Okay. But the house in West Virginia, I still had. Okay. I didn't sell it. I kept it. Okay, wow. I was getting money every month. Grandma didn't have to go to work. I didn't have to have two jobs. Okay. So uh, So where did you work at the time? I was working at, um, at that time. When you moved into California. I was working at Aerojet. Aerojet, okay. But before that, I had other right, jobs right, right, other right. companies. Right. But this was Aerojet, and uh, uh, that's how I got the job was... When I was working at Marquard, the supervisor there uh, told me about Aerojet. Yeah, okay. He says they're hiring. Okay. He says, uh, and uh, he says, I know the, uh, I know the foreman there. Tell okay. him I sent you. And uh, so that's what happened. So you're working. I got hired. You're working at Aerojet. I'm working at Aerojet in the. Uh, uh, Working in a machine shop there. Okay. And let's see, at Aerojet, I was in the. Um, uh, well, let me let me think a minute here. At Aerojet, I was working in the machine shop at the time, and we were working on the government government stuff, and. Uh, one of my one of my jobs I had, I had been picked to work in the secret department at Aerojet, and uh, I had to get a federal clearance for that. So that was secret; could not tell even my wife what I was doing. So, uh, so I did well. Went through the apprenticeship and all. I went through the uh, the. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Your, your 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 period of time, whether they keep you or not. Right. Uh, your probation. Probational period. Probation period. Went through Good all job. that, and then the, uh, and then the uh, the foreman that I had, wonderful man, treated me very well, and uh, nice, and uh, he had. Uh, he was a very secure person. He didn't have any any problems at all with his job or anything or what he was shooting for at Aerojet. And uh, so um, so that all worked out very well. And um, then the, the, the fellow that was working in the secret department, uh, he was he was promoted. And then they needed someone for the secret project, and they, they chose me, and I went over, and, and I got the job, and uh, it was some kind of a secret, and I kind of think it was the, uh, the uh, it was something like the P-38 called the Black Widow. It was a twin-tail, uh, two-man uh, spy plane. And... And uh, I, I used to go to that particular department and uh, change the ball bearing right. in this scanner. And they were like BBs in this race about that big uh, round. I told you about that. No, no, keep going. Tell me about it. Tell me what, what do you remember about it? What do you remember about going there and changing it? What was, what was it like? When I went to Aerojet? When you would change the ball bearings and service oh, it. When I was chill ball bearings, I just felt very secure. I knew what I was doing. I felt comfortable. 
Well, what would you have to do? Take out old ones or, or put in a whole Maybe new? dry ice. Okay. Put dry ice. Now, now this is a, a race that's only maybe a quarter of an inch thick. They're like ball, like I say, BBs. And they're in this race. And it's all capsulated. Okay. And uh, you take your dry ice and put it in there where that, where that race is and shrink it. Pick it up with your, your fingers or, or whatever it was I had at the time. Pick it up, take it right out. That, that easy. Came right out. And uh, drop the other one in. Wow. Drop the other one in. Wow. Because I had shrunk the other one before I tried to drop it in. Wow. I shrunk it. Just enough for it to drop right in. Never had a problem. And that Never. was that was what you did. That was the whole task. And, and this, yeah, and um, I don't want to get too far on another story. Okay, go ahead. I'll bring you back. Uh, so I, uh, I didn't have a problem with that because I would go there when required. Okay. And they would they would tell the supervisor, the foreman, that uh, send Belanco down. Uh, we need him. That's all they had to say, and they knew I had a secret clearance. There's no question. Where was this? Where was? Where were you going? Hmm. Where was it that you would go to? Was it a different it location? Was a, it was a, uh, uh, another department where I had to um, go, in, go in to a clean... Uh, a clean room. Cleaning uh, shed-like. and uh, Get decontaminated, de de dust out of you. And then you'd walk through there. Did and you have to put anything on? I would put a smock on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, spotless. Everything spotless. Did you have, have to wear gloves, a I mask? Wear a mask, everything. Gloves, a hair, gloves. A hairnet or? A hairnet. Wow. Yeah. Never had a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, and, like, you, sounds like you were good at that job. Well, yes. And, uh, you know, once, once, uh, uh, I uh, I took over the job and they they saw I was qualified and I didn't have a, any problems whatsoever, not any at all. Uh, I was in like Flynn. In like I Flynn. Was in like Flynn, meaning that I was there forever. <laughs> I had secret clearance. Uh, I had to have secret clearance for that, and uh, it was all downhill, all downhill. And wow. I didn't have to worry about anything. They liked me. They loved me. And one day I'm I'm at church, at the Catholic Church, and um, one of the engineers that I used to do jobs for, uh, he went to the same church. Wow. And uh, I'm coming out of church, and I'm in the vestibule, the outside area of the church, where Mass was being held. And... Uh, uh, Frank Gagnon comes there at the same time with his family. He stops me. He says, Steve, I still want you to meet my family. And he goes to his family and says, I want you to meet my best toolmaker at Aerojet, Steve here. My best, he says. Yeah. And, uh, and I took it, you know, I guess I am. <laughs> well, you was were, no problem. You were proud. And I of, knew I was good. You were proud about I your work. I wasn't cocky, but I knew I was good. And no matter what I did, I knew I was good. I knew I was the best they had. Honestly, I was that secure. I felt that sure of myself, and uh, and that was a good feeling. And uh, and I had a couple of bosses who wanted to get rid of me and uh didn't happen so uh, this this the last boss that i had he especially didn't like me and uh because i knew more than him 
No, I, I'm not being cocky, but it was true. I knew more than him. But he was just an asshole, so insecure, afraid of his job. And uh, when I came out of church, I meet Frank Gagnon, the, the engineer, and he has his family there. And he says, oh, he says, by the way, hold on. I want you to meet Steve Belanco, my best toolmaker that I have. And I was surprised. Because right. he nobody ever bragged about my my quality, my work, or whatever, and uh, and uh, introduced me to them. And yeah, uh, that's great. That's a great compliment. You know, but you, yeah. you know, you build up a good reputation. Now I have to tell you about the little machine that I had to build for to to um, check out these little micro switches. I told you about those right. tiny things, and. Um, uh, I, I made the machine according to the drawing and how it was supposed to work and how it had the arm and it would go and touch that little tip on that little micro switch. Do do, do do, do do on each one. And uh, I built a machine, put it together, tried it out. Well, what was the machine for? It was to test out the micro switch that went on the satellite. Well, how what is how was the machine built? Tell me how it was built. The, the machine was a a a box with an arm on it. Okay. And the arm would actuate around like this. Okay. And it what would, what would the arm it would do? Touch, it would touch the button and go back around for the next next one. Okay. And it was a little complex. Okay. But uh, you know. Those things I was I was used to. Right, and so you were testing it out. I was you built it. I was testing then... the machine. Wouldn't work. What happened? It wouldn't work. Three Stu, chief tool designer. Three Stu, yeah, Steve. I uh, finished your machine, Stu, but it won't work. Steve, make it work. That, that was the last word he said. Steve, make it work. And then what did you do after you hung up the phone? I made it work. <laughs> of course you, know, you did. I'm not bragging about no, how great I am, but the people of uh, of my quality of, of skill needed for what we were doing, they were all highly skilled. Right. Oh, very sharp. Very sharp. Did you, did you like some of the people you worked with? What were some of the people... Uh, that the, you worked with the the fellows that I worked with, yes, I did like them, but uh, the foreman who was trying to fire me, right? That that was a problem for me, but I I I walked through it. I my my patience, my patience, the patience of Job. Yeah, I always thought of that, the patience of Job. Hang in there, Steve. My mind's running. Well, tell me what you're thinking about. Well, I'm thinking about how uh, I was accepted by certain people and why certain people were so afraid of me. That's the feeling I had that there was something about me that they were worried about. And uh, that was the own conclusion, which was probably stupid anyway. Uh, and... Um, when 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 he asked me, Balako, what the hell are you doing over there? Sorry, I got a secret clearance. Can't tell you. You have to get a clearance. Sorry, and uh, it was tough going from then on. <laughs> but I was able to keep my cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I'm what I'm what I'm saying is that you are in a place where you're dealing with people who are afraid of you. They're afraid of you. That's what it's all about. Yeah, we're afraid of Samuel. You know, we're afraid of Steve. Yeah, we're afraid of Jim. And I worked with a lot of nice people, a lot of nice men. And uh, 
And I was respected, and I respected everybody that I, I worked with, helped them if I could. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of little stories uh, that it, it, could, it could go on and on and on, Samuel. But always keep your patience. Keep your powder dry. Don't let anyone antagonize you. If they do, slough them off. Oh, really? Yeah, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. No. Oh, I'll be damned. Hmm. Where did you find out? From Harry. <laughs> That's the way it goes. That is the way it goes. Sam, I don't want to keep you up. I'm I'm fine. But you know, but... I just I, I I'm just being selfish. I, I don't know. want to let go of you because I uh, I'm enjoying my history that I'm able to think back and say, God damn it, Steve, you did do a good job. Yeah, there's a there's a lot. I'm proud of what I did, and Biddy knows how much I loved her, and there will never be anybody else that. I, I could fall in love with. There's a lady here. Did you see the lady in that car? I I did meet her. Yeah. She offered uh, to to uh, have a date with me. <laughs> hey, you're still a popular man. You're still a popular man, Grandpa. Well, it is it is late. We could always pick up tomorrow, get a good night's sleep, and be well rested. I'm not yawning. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Sam, I'll, uh, I'll let you keep Sam, talking. I, I just want to say how much I love Deidre. No, oh, I, I love her too. She is, there's something about that lady that impressed me so much that I, uh, I just think the world of her and, uh, I don't know, it must be the connection, Samuel. You have something to do with all of this magic. Yeah. I think it's all her. Yeah, I think she's, she's fantastic. She's a sweetheart. I love her dearly. She is so bright. So ahead of her time. Yeah. She is special. She is. Very special. You're right. You you can you can you can you tell know, Samuel, that she's good. Not only me, but you yeah. are in a better place. Yeah. Both of us. The both of us. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's great. And you know, when I look at things like this that I I don't want you to think that I'm the only guy on a planet that can do certain things but it's just something I love right that is a toolbox that my father had that is a toolbox my brother sold without my permission that was my father's toolbox yeah and that was beautiful. You see my toolbox? That was the condition that was in. The same kind of material. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. I, I, I wish that you could have known my father and my mom. Yeah. Uh, just to... Uh, just to, to see what made them tick why they were so content with each other, why they loved each other so dearly, and uh, there was no, nothing in this world that they needed except the two of them. Nothing I needed except Grandma. Right. I don't want, I don't want to be bothered. Do you think... Do you think seeing your parents' relationship 
influenced your relationship with grandma? Do My you... relationship with the lady friend that I had? <laughs> no, no, no. So when you watched your mom and dad, when you watched your mom and dad, do you think that affected the way you and your wife acted? Did you, did you, did it, did it influence? So your parents' relationship. Did, good. Good. Did you learn things from them oh, for I, your I, marriage? I, I think, yes. Did I, you try and I duplicate, there, did you try and duplicate it? I don't think so. But I think there are subliminal things that transpire as the tree grows. Yeah. As the tree grows, but it must grow in the right direction, with the right roots, with the right personality, the right temperament, and the, and the ability to not be afraid to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all. I'm sorry. When you have a good thing, don't fix it. When you have a good thing, don't fix it. Because it won't have to be fixed. Because it's going to be every bit as good, if not better, as you take the next step through the walk of life. The next step. You're always on a journey, Samuel. You're always on a journey. And you always have to keep your powder dry. And you always have to keep that lady first. She comes first. You come last. And that's just a, a, uh, a metaphor, if it is. I am enjoying this conversation yeah. more than anything that I have uh, I have in a, in a long time. Let's put it that way. Yeah. In a long time. Well, let me ask you this. So you're living at Highland Court. Wait a minute. Wait. You're, you're living at Highland Court? Your home? Yeah. Highland Court? Yeah. And then, or the, and then uh, Kathleen is born? And then you have... Suzanne born? Stephanie's the first. Stephanie's the first. Kathleen, number two. Okay. Suzanne, number three. So tell me, what's it like having a second child? And then what's it like having a third child? What was it, what was it like for you? What, did it change things in the house? Tell me about, tell me about what happened as I you got more each kids. I one without even comparing. I loved each one to the fullest. And I uh, probably didn't even realize how much I was showering my my feelings for them. And mom came first, the kids comes second, third, number one, number two, and number three in their order of their birth. Right. I don't have any preference for anyone I want I want to be able to provide for them in any way shape or form I don't want anybody to think that they're going to get a free lunch and uh, it doesn't it doesn't make a person a whole full solid citizen what 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 doesn't make them? If they can't carry the if load, they can't carry their weight. Hmm? If they can't carry the load, they can't carry the load. They're, they're take a hike. Yep, I gotcha. If you can't carry the load, take a hike. So so you did that with your kids. They were expected to to do their part. Well, because that's what you were just talking about. So I I I ran a a, a tight ship. Okay. Because I always backed up Grandma. Okay. Kathleen's going to go to school one day in white bib overalls. Yeah. Yeah. Not on my dead body. 
Tell me more. Why? Why did you? Why did you she, think that? I guess the kids in the public schools were wearing bib overalls. My daughter wasn't going to go to school with bib overalls. Why? Because I said so. What was wrong with thick? <laughs> Say that again. Why? I'm your father. <laughs> but what's wrong with... And don't you talk back to your mom again. <laughs> <laughs> Too loud. Too loud. Okay. Don't you, don't you talk back to mom again. <laughs> Sounds like you have that down. I said, Sounds like you have that down. Did you say that a lot? Not often. Never had to say it to Stephanie. She Never was, had to say it to Suzanne. She was a good one. But Kathleen, had, she had her own mind, and 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 we we knew that you know she was different, but we loved her. Where are you going with those bib overalls? I'm going to school, Dad. You're not going to school in bib overalls. Take them off. How old was she? Huh? How old was she? I think she was... She could have been a sophomore. Wow. And what was wrong with them? What, what Was Nothing. it because the way they looked or... Well, it was bib overalls. You What's... don't go to school in bib overalls Why... out of my house. Why not? What What are they? What, what Are they like pajamas? Because I'm in charge. <laughs> and they look tacky or what? You did it just to do it? Because it was not the thing to wear out of my house. It was it was not appropriate. Not it was apropos. It, and it wasn't it wasn't because they were risque. It they was, weren't dirty. It, it, they weren't like raunchy. No. They were they just fit. they were just they fit. They were just lame. They fit well. Oh, that's why. Cause, they fit well. Because they fit and, well. Uh, I see what you're saying. And, uh, it was a little too... Dad's going to make it sure It was that a little too much. She's going to be okay. I'm and, still there in charge. And you had you had to do that a lot? You had to... No. You had to rein back the clothing? No, just one time. It was it. <laughs> but it, it was... I, as, I, as I look back in retrospect... I just chuckle so much because she did what, exactly what I told her to do. No questions, no arguments, no, but she did, no whining. She walked right in, changed them. And it was not a mean gesture the way I did it. It was not a mean threat. <laughs> It sound it sounded a little mean. No, it wasn't. You got you got Not in my time. <laughs> you got loud telling the story. <laughs> Not in Grandpa's time. <laughs> I thought you were yelling at me wearing overalls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know that was. I I had so many happy events that really kind of make me explode inside. With happiness. Tell me some of them. Tell, um, me, of, tell me one you can think of. Tell me one right now. A family. Tell me a story Betty. about family. About My Betty. wife. My wife. Now what is that? Something a song. And that's my wife. Something like that. And that she was... Very special. Yeah. And still. What, what was she like as a mother when you watched her with your children? She was soft, easygoing. She let the, she let the girls kind of twirl her around a little bit until she wanted me to lay down the law. As soon as I walked in the door, you know the entry? I know it. Honey... You better talk to Kathleen. Honey, you better talk to Stephanie. Not Suzanne. Never had to 
Suzanne was like a church mouse. Suzanne. Aunt Suzanne? Suzanne? Not Aunt Stephanie? Here's a tale.